The leader of Lockbit, the world's most infamous cybercrime gang, has just been doxxed by law enforcement. Also in your hacking news roundup, the KGB has been hacked and an our evil ransomware affiliate is going to prison. But first, earlier this week, the UK's National Crime Agency rebooted the dark website of Lockbit, the one they hacked and seized back in February. Law enforcement teased yet more information on Lockbit's mysterious leader, Lockbit Sub. However, I just really wasn't expecting much from this. The last time law enforcement promised to unmask the leader of the most notorious cybercrime gang on the planet, they just gave us a couple paragraphs of what looks like absolute nonsense. But this time is different. When the countdown timer hit zero, it was revealed that the leader of Lockbit is one Dmitry Yuryevich Koroshev. The guy is 31 years old and lives in Verona's Russia, and he's just had a $10 million bounty put on his head. That is, if you can lure him into a country that'll extradite him to the US. But if you do come across him, he is quite easy to identify, thanks to his inability to wear AirPods properly. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. If you can shed some light on that, let me know down in the comments. The feds only published a basic profile on the guy. However, OSINT analysts on X have gone a hell of a lot further and uncovered mountains of data on him. They used the US Treasury sanctions announcement as a starting point. It mentions a couple of his email addresses and his iCloud address just so happens to be in a breach which originates from the hack of Yandex Eats in 2022. Yandex Eats is basically a Russian version of Uber Eats. The leak revealed a phone number linked to his account, which is in turn linked to his public VK profile. There's a few interesting pictures of the guy on here. He also didn't bother to lock down privacy on his profile, so his friends list and everything is just totally public. The OSINT analysts have been wildly successful, which is really quite surprising for a guy who's meant to be America's most wanted cyber criminal. You would have thought he'd gone to some lengths to minimize his online presence. I mean, the fact he even owns an iCloud account tied to his true identity is just not really the smartest of moves. And researchers have managed to piece together a whole list of his online accounts, email addresses, physical addresses, companies he owns, phone numbers, and a hell of a lot more. I'll leave some links below if you want to explore that rabbit hole. Things are not looking good for Dimitri, which is especially amusing given his psychotic reaction to Operation Kronos back in February. The operation, led by the UK's National Crime Agency, resulted in Lockbit's dark website being hacked and repurposed to showcase the achievements of law enforcement. The hack really was amazing to watch unfold and I totally recommend watching my video on it up here. However, the takedown mostly affected just servers. Only a handful of affiliates were identified and arrested. And so, just days later, Lockbit rebooted their operation and their leader posted a two and a half thousand word rant in which he comes across sounding like some kind of evil mastermind. All FBI actions are aimed at destroying the reputation of my affiliate program, my demoralization. They want me to leave and quit my job. They want to scare me because they cannot find and eliminate me. I cannot be stopped. You cannot even hope. He goes on to say, I love my work. It brings me joy from life. I am ready to risk my life for the sake of my work. That's how bright, rich, and dangerous life should be, in my opinion. So yeah, the narcissism is bordering on the psychotic, but you can find the full breakdown of his rant in the video up here. Lockbit has responded to the unmasking of their leader by simply denying it, saying the FBI has got the wrong guy. And realistically, the FBI could be wrong. These developments are, of course, just accusations until he's proven guilty in a court of law. However, the feds have a 99% conviction rate. They simply just don't charge people unless they're certain they'll get a conviction. And regardless of Lockbit's denial, Dimitri has been slapped with sanctions in the US, the UK, and Australia, which means doing business with the guy, in other words, paying a Lockbit ransom, is now probably totally illegal in those countries. So the group's efforts to make money just got a lot harder. The hacktivist group, the Belarusian Cyber Partisans, are claiming to have hacked the KGB, stealing the personal details of thousands of agents, as well as exposing foreign citizens who've contacted the KGB wanting to work as informants. Now, you might have thought the KGB just isn't a thing anymore. I mean, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia renamed the KGB the FSK and then eventually the FSB, which is what it's known as today. However, Belarus, formerly part of the Soviet Union, didn't change the name of their intelligence agency, and so it remains to this day, the KGB. The KGB's website has been down for the past two months, and nobody knew why. Well, until a few days ago, when the Belarusian cyber partisans claimed responsibility. And this isn't just some DDoS attack. They claim to have hacked the website in late 2023, and since then have been silently exfiltrating data. They've leaked the website's database as well as some basic log files, which really weren't all that interesting. 
However, what came next was a whole lot more juicy. The Cyber Partisans revealed that they'd grabbed the personal information of more than 8,600 KGB employees. And using all this data, the Partisans have made a Telegram bot that can help journalists and activists figure out if they're dealing with an undercover agent. Idea being, you upload a photo, and then with the power of facial recognition, the bot will let you know if the guy is on the payroll of the KGB. But the leaks went one step further. The hacktivists revealed that they gained access to what seems like a database of KGB contact forms. This could be the spiciest part of the leaks, because they reveal instances of people contacting the KGB offering to work as informants. From the forms leaked on their Telegram channel, many of these are just from Belarusian citizens living abroad, looking for a job. However, I did read one submission claiming to be from a Bulgarian intelligence officer wanting to become a KGB informant. Bulgaria, by the way, is a NATO country. There's also a form in here from an Israeli citizen wanting to set up a meeting about some kind of issue of state security. The veracity of these leaks are totally impossible for me to verify. However, this is definitely one of, if not the most interesting data dump I've seen leaked by hacktivists, and no doubt will get the attention of Western intelligence. And to help people comb through the list of 40,000 submissions, the cyber partisans have set up a website that you can use to search the database. This hacktivist group is pretty active. They spawned in 2020, but gained prominence during the invasion of Ukraine when they hacked Belarus's railway network, temporarily frustrating the movement of troops and military hardware to the border with Ukraine. The group is staunchly opposed to Belarus's dictator and the Russian regime, but in terms of this latest hack, they claim it was in response to the KGB's chief, accusing the group of plotting attacks on Belarusian critical infrastructure, such as nuclear power plants, which the group totally denies. However, ironically, just a week or so later, the cyber partisans revealed that they'd hacked Grodno Azot, a state-run producer of nitrogen compounds and fertilizers. Whether this counts as critical infrastructure is debatable, but regardless, fertilizers are pretty dangerous stuff, as evidenced by the 2020 Beirut explosion, need I say more. The partisans posted a video showing that they gained access to industrial control systems, saying they could have stopped production lines and caused a real catastrophe. However, in terms of actual action, they claim, at least, to have only gone after the corporate side of things, destroying backups, emails, and encrypting computers. An affiliate of the infamous ransomware group R Evil has just been sentenced to 13 years in an American prison. The feds claim that 24-year-old Yaroslav Vasinski was involved in over 2,500 ransomware attacks, demanding over $700 million from his victims. The guy was found with a good few Bitcoin and $6.1 million in cash, a nice little treasure trove which could have lasted a lifetime. However, Yaroslav, a Ukrainian citizen, didn't seem to understand that one of the trade-offs of becoming a cyber criminal kingpin that primarily targets its American companies is that you don't get to go on holiday. You forfeit the rights to travel to any and all countries which have an extradition treaty with the United States. But in 2021, he made the mistake of crossing the border into a small Polish village where he was promptly arrested. And by the way, this was before the war. We don't know what intel led to his arrest, though there is a $5 million bounty on the heads of our evil ransomware affiliates, so it wouldn't be at all surprising if one of his former comrades hopped on America's Rewards for Justice Onion site and just ratted him out. But regardless, after being arrested, he was quickly extradited to the United States, where he'll be spending the next 13 years in a small metal cage. One of the ransomware attacks that Yaroslav is accused of playing a part in was the attack that exploited Kaseya VSA in 2021. This software is used by thousands of companies worldwide to help their system admins manage their networks remotely. So when R-Evil discovered multiple zero-day vulnerabilities in it, they were able to compromise the thousands of companies that rely on it, resulting in one of the largest cyber incidents of all time. A Swedish supermarket chain was forced to shut their doors, and some schools in New Zealand had to close. The bad guys demanded a $70 million ransom to fix the mess, which, unfortunately for them, went unpaid. The US wasn't too happy about the Kaseya hack. It primarily affected American companies and was just a massive headache for everyone involved. Don't believe me? Just check the managed service provider subreddit. In the wake of all this, the FBI launched an operation which took down our evil's darknet servers. The group, of course, made multiple attempts to restart, but it was just a bit of a mess. One of their admins stole and ran away with a bunch of money, then they got hacked again, and eventually the group just fizzled out. But for his part in the operation, in addition to spending the next 13 years behind bars, Yaroslav has been ordered to pay $16 million in restitution to his victims. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.